Man, people love Vanguard, specifically Vanguard index funds. All you can see on YouTube these days on somebody's personal finance channel is talk about VTSAX this and VTSAX that or VTI versus VOO. Hey, don't get me wrong. I like Vanguard as well. And I am definitely invested in Vanguard index funds for my own investment and retirement portfolios. But the reality is here on YouTube, the majority of the conversation is centered around the ETFs for Vanguard, the S&P 500, and the total market and the counterpart mutual funds. But I'm here to tell you that there are other Vanguard index funds out there that might just be better for your retirement portfolio. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end of the video because I'm going to share with you why Vanguard's S&P 500 index fund is kind of the same as Vanguard's total market index fund. And I'm also going to share with you three other Vanguard index funds that no Nobody's talking about here on YouTube that might just be perfect for your retirement portfolio. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe. And on this channel we talk a lot about investing, but we talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. That includes budgeting, paying off debt, saving for retirement, saving for your kids college, and all things in between. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell to be alerted to all of my weekly videos. I put out at least two videos each and every week. So I spent a few hours researching this video and making sure I found the three best Vanguard index funds that can outperform or at least match and give you some diversification away from Vanguard's S&P 500 index fund and their total market index fund. So if you find any value or benefit at all from this video, make sure you hit that like button below. Really, it's, it's not that hard. You just click in it and this video does better in the YouTube algorithm and my channel does as well. So thank you for that. Let's get into the video. Hey, so Closer, closer. Did you know that Vanguard's S&P 500 index fund and their total market index fund are like the same? Seriously, question of the day. I want you to drop in the comments below before I give you your answer. How many of the top 10 holdings between Vanguard's S&P 500 index fund and Vanguard's total market index fund are exactly the same? So I'm not sure if you saw this coming or not, but they're exactly the same. All 10 of the top 10 holdings for the S&P 500 index fund are the same as Vanguard's total market index fund. How could that be? The reality is both of these funds are known as market cap weighted index funds, meaning that the largest companies in the index have the highest weighting. On the other side, the smallest companies have the smallest weightings. So they're exactly the same. And with the S&P 500 index fund, 23% of the entire index percentage wise is in the top 10 holdings. And even with the total market index fund, it still makes up 19% of the entire index. So when you buy VTI versus VOO or VTSAX versus is VFIAX, you're pretty much buying the exact same thing. And when you look at the beta, which measures the volatility of the fund or the stock, guess what? They're both one, which means they both move lock and step with the S&P 500. You would expect that from the S&P 500 index fund, but I don't think you would expect that from the total market index fund. But that is the reality of these two index funds. But enough about Vanguard's S&P 500 index fund and their total market index fund. This video is about three other Vanguard index funds that might be perfect for your investment portfolio. Okay, so the first Vanguard index fund that I would recommend is is Vanguard's Mega Growth ETF. The ticker symbol for the Vanguard Mega Cap Growth ETF or Exchange Traded Fund is MGK, and it seeks to track the performance of the CRSP US Mega Cap Growth Index. So those of you that love investing in those FANG stocks, the Facebook, the Amazon, all those big companies are gonna love this one because it's a double down on the bet on these large tech businesses. Instead of holding 505 holdings like say an S&P 500 index fund, this mega cap growth fund only has 115 holdings. You'll see here the top 10 holdings in this index fund make up half of the total net assets. And those top 10 holdings are the same as you would see in the S&P 500. Companies like Microsoft, Apple, 
Alphabet, which is Google, Amazon, Facebook, Visa, etc. So if you love investing in the big companies, the ones that have really been driving the growth in the S&P 500 and really the entire stock market, this is a double down bet on those large companies, but it still gives you diversification with these companies amongst 115 different holdings. As of the end of business on January 10th, 2020, the actual price per share for this exchange traded fund is $150.02. You can see here with this exchange traded fund, the growth beats the S&P 500. Because again, it's a double down on the largest companies and that growth that has fueled the overall market growth. As of December 31st, 2019, 37.56%. The three year return 20%, the five year return 13.79%, and the 10 year return 14.81%. Since the index fund was created in December of 2007, this index fund has delivered 10.92% growth. If we know anything about Vanguard index funds, we know that they deliver low expense ratios. And this index fund is no different. The expense ratio per year is 0.07%. This index fund focuses on growth companies. And as a result, you're not going to see a large dividend yield, 0.8%, though that is partly contributed to based on the run-up in the stock price over the past year. So who does this ETF make sense for? It makes sense for the individuals out there who love companies like Google and Facebook and Apple. They love investing in these large companies. Maybe they use the services from these companies and they are buying into the fact that they will continue to drive large amounts of growth in the future for the stock market. And with this, you get a much higher concentration in these specific companies and this can make up a portion of your portfolio and still drive a large amount of growth. Who is this ETF not right for? People that love diversification. While it does diversify over 115 different holdings, it still is even more concentrated than the S&P 500. If you're looking for more diversification than 115 holdings, then this index fund might not be for you. Okay, so the second Vanguard index fund that you may never have heard of that's got to be in your portfolio is the Vanguard Small Cap Growth Exchange Traded Fund. Ticker symbol is VB. Okay. Now, for those of you that love Vanguard mutual funds, thankfully there is a mutual fund that has the exact same portfolio. That is the Vanguard Small Cap Growth Index Fund Admiral Shares, and that is V. S G A X. I love the Vanguard small cap growth ETF. Even though the total market index fund touts over 3000 holdings, the majority of the concentration as we've talked about is in those top 10, maybe 15 or 20 holdings. That being said, with the small cap index fund, you have 606 holdings in the ETF and those 606 holdings, the top 10 makes up 7%. And we're already talking about companies that are not in the top 500 companies like Burlington Stores, Zebra Technologies, Teledyne Technologies, Insulet Corp. They're a much smaller segment of the equity market, but we're getting a larger concentration of these holdings in this index fund. Both the index fund and the exchange traded fund have an expense ratio of 0.07%, which equates to about $7 for every $10,000 invested. One thing to keep in mind with all of Vanguard's mutual funds, if you're one that tends to invest in the exchange traded funds, is that the mutual funds all require at least an initial investment of $3,000. While with an ETF, which is my preference, you can get in for the price of the actual share and in so many companies and brokerages these days, you can invest for free. The one that I prefer is M1 Finance where I can invest for any exchange or fund for no commissions. As of end of business, January 10th, 2020. The per share price for the ETF is $201.14 and for the mutual fund it is $70.75. As you can see here, both the mutual fund and the exchange traded fund are outperforming the S&P 500 and the total market fund for Vanguard. The one year return 32.86%, the three year return 15.14%, the five year return 10.5%, 10 year return 13.66% and since inception in January of 2000 for, this has returned 9.7%. Now, here is the reality. The small cap stocks and index funds out there are going to be more volatile than the S&P 500. These are smaller companies and smaller companies tend to grow more rapidly and in declining markets, they drop more rapidly. But the reality is the returns for small cap funds have risen higher and have generated higher returns for shareholders and investors than the S&P 500 or any type of total market index fund. So who is the small cap index fund right for? People who are okay with more risk 
should definitely have this type of ETF or mutual fund in their portfolio. When we're talking about long-term investing, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about Vanguard index funds, we're looking for long-term gains. What better place to put our money than a small cap exchange traded fund or mutual fund? As you can see, the returns outpace the overall market. During a declining market, are you gonna see lower returns? Yes, you are. But in an increasing market, you're gonna see larger returns than everybody else around you. Okay, so the third Vanguard index fund that you need to have in your portfolio that you may have just never heard of, especially here on YouTube, is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield Exchange Traded Fund. And of course, there is an Admiral Shares version of this index fund, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield Index Fund Admiral Shares, V-H-Y-A-X. The yield based on the trailing 12 months is over 3%. Whereas with some of the other index funds we would see with Vanguard, especially the total market and the S&P 500, we're looking at more like one to one and a half percent. The per share price for the exchange traded fund is $93.23. And for the mutual fund Admiral shares version, it is $28.10 per share. The exchange traded fund version of this index fund has an expense ratio of only 0.06% whereas the mutual fund has an expense ratio of 0.08%. As of December 31st, 2019, this exchange traded fund has returned 24.18% over the last year, over three years, 10.8%, over five years, 9.79%, over 10 years, 12.85%, and since the inception in 2006, 8.18%. Now the other two Vanguard index funds we talked about did actually beat the S&P 500, whereas this trailed the S&P 500 by a little bit. But that's because there's a difference in the top holdings. S&P 500 was driven largely by companies like Google and Apple and Amazon and Microsoft, which are generally not companies that pay a large dividend if one at all. Whereas these companies, the ones we're talking about in this index fund, are characterized by their long-standing dividend yields. Now dividends can be a great aspect of your portfolio, especially in declining markets. With companies like Facebook and Google and other large tech companies that are still growing and not focused on dividends, in an increasing market, then the returns are great. But with dividend paying funds in a declining market, your losses are mitigated a little bit by the presence of dividends being paid on a quarterly basis and when reinvested, really contribute to a larger return over time. As you can see in the past, dividends have been responsible for a large portion of the returns over certain years, whereas other years have been characterized more by capital appreciation. There are 404 holdings in this exchange traded fund. You're gonna recognize most of these companies. Companies like JP Morgan Chase, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Exxon, AT&T, Intel, and companies like Chevron and Wells Fargo. Companies that have been around for a very long time that are not in the hyper growth stage of business anymore and are focused on returning cash to shareholders. When it comes to investing in your retirement or investing portfolio, you're probably gonna do just fine if you invest in index funds like the S&P 500 or their total market. That being said, there are some other Vanguard index funds out there that are going to be able to generate larger returns than you would find in the S&P 500. Specifically, when you talk about doubling down on large businesses like Facebook and Amazon and Google, or really focusing on smaller segments of the US economy, such as small cap index funds. So here's what I want from you right now. Do me a favor, drop in the comments below, let me know which of these three exchange traded funds or the two mutual fund versions that I mentioned do you think you might add to your investment portfolio based on the information you found here in this video today? In a future video, I'm thinking of giving you my a reveal of my Vanguard 401k portfolio where I can show you that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I am invested in some of the same types of sectors and stocks and index funds that I'm mentioning on these videos. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that 401k reveal with Vanguard as well. So on this channel, Channel, we talk about more than just investing in Vanguard index funds, though I'm a big believer in Vanguard index funds. We talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. Things like creating a budget for the very first time, or maybe paying off debt, the consumer debt in your life that's really weighing you down, or investing for your future or your kids' future college expenses. Any kind of personal finance topic that affects people like you and I, the average Joe, we're gonna cover it on this channel. So if there's anything specific you wanna hear more about from me, make sure to drop that in the comments below. Make sure to continue the conversation with me by checking out these videos right over here.